Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about scalar product of two vectors um, in the context of, uh, of the problems, actually. Um, what, I, uh, what, what, what I kind of presented to you um, in the last two lectures, which were purely theoretical, was the definition of the scalar product of two vectors. Um, in particular, if you have representation as uh, a tuple in a coordinate form, you have these two vectors. Then the scalar product of these two vectors uh, was derived in, in the following way. as this formula. Again, I derive basically this formula from certain common principles or rules which scalar product of two vectors um, would be great to have, so to speak. I mean, we invented these rules and they seem to be quite natural and so as a result of these rules we derived this formula in the coordinate tuple representation of the vectors. I would like, um, as, as a problem actually, to go backwards. So, what if this formula is given to us? How can I demonstrate that all these reasonable and natural rules which we have established at the very beginning are actually held, are satisfied? So, uh, I will go through the same set of rules and I will try to prove that this formula actually satisfies these rules. So, even if we go um, probably more classical way of presenting this mathematical concept. Okay, let's define the scalar product in this formula. Now let's check these properties, and the properties will be the rules which we were talking about. So, let's go one by one with the same set of rules which I was using to derive the formula. Now let, let, let's actually derive the rules from the formula. Okay, now the first rule was independence on certain transformation of the uh, coordinate space. Um, the transformation which I, um, I was talking about was the one which did not change uh, the matrix of the space, which means if the segment had certain lengths in the old coordinate system, then it would have exactly the same lengths in the new one. So the length is not changing. And the relative position of the vectors like an angle between these two vectors is not changed. So basically I'm talking about rotation of the coordinate system. Uh, also the reflection uh, relative to one of the axes is also of this type. It does not change the length and that does not change the, the angle between vectors. Now obviously I'm not talking about any kind of a stretching or, or shrinking the, the coordinate system, so the unit length remains exactly the same. So actually that's the, the most important property which we are talking about. Okay, so let's talk about rotation. That seems to be like a natural way of changing the coordinate system. And let's check that this particular formula is stable, so to speak, towards the location, uh, uh, towards the rotation. So after we rotate the coordinates, a1, A2, B1, and B2 will change, but the formula will result in exactly the same, um, uh, the same number. Now, to do this, to accomplish this, to demonstrate that the scalar product is actually invariant, which means it doesn't really change, invariant uh, to rotation, let's just examine how the rotation actually changes the coordinates. So, let's say you had one particular coordinate system, x, y, and then you had a point somewhere which had certain coordinates. So the length of this is x, the length of this is y. Now let's say we change the coordinate system, we rotate it, and the new coordinate system would be this. This would be my new abscissa, which I will call U, and this would be my new
coordinate system, coordinate axis, which is, let's say, V. Now, the coordinate of the same point, which used to be x, y, now will be u, v. So, this segment is u, and this segment is v. I would like to express the lengths of these two segments, u and v, in terms of x and y, the coordinates in the old system, and an angle of the rotation. So this angle is, let's say, phi. Or I think I used alpha in my notes for this lecture, so let's just use alpha. So alpha is an angle of rotation. We have rotated this coordinate system this way. So the coordinates are changing. Let's try to uh, express the new coordinates u and y in terms of the old x and v, x and y, and uh, angle uh, and angle of. Now, what should we do? Well, let's put some letters so we will know what we're talking about. Okay, so b and c are projections of the r point A onto the old uh, axis. Now, d and E, oh, okay, we know that this is Y, so this point is E, and we know that this is X, okay, it's clear. So, um, let me just do a couple of equations um, to derive the values of u and v uh, in terms of x and, uh, and y and, and, and angle uh, alpha. All right, um, so let's think about it. Um, I think I can say that AB, this piece, is equal to... Um, okay, uh, we need the letter, let's say, M here. A M plus M B, right? Now, what is A B? A B is ordinate of the A in the old system, right? So it's Y. What is A M? Well, let's consider a triangle A M G. A M is a hypotenuse. A G is a cajetus adjacent to the angle M A G and angle is obviously equal to alpha, because there are two mutually perpendicular lines. So, in terms of cajetus AG, which is an ordinate in the new system, which is V, I have to divide it by cosine of this angle to get the AM, right? So it's V over cosine of alpha. Okay, now what is MB? And B is a cajetus in the triangle O and B. OB is another cajetus. I know that OB is equal to, uh, this is uh, an abscissa of A in the old system, which is X. And this is also the same angle alpha, right? There are verticals. So MB is equal to X divided by tangent. Uh, no, multiplied by tangent, sorry. X multiplied by tangent alpha, right? Now, if I will multiply it by cosine, I will have y cosine alpha here. Tangent is sine over cosine, so the cosine will multiply and it will have only sine. And I will resolve it for v, so v is equal to minus x sine alpha plus y cosine alpha. That's my first equation. That's how V is expressed in terms of X and Y, basically. So V we have already expressed. Now let's talk about, um, about U, this one. Okay, here's what I suggest. Let's just continue this line to point N, let's say. 
Now, I know that NA is equal to NC plus CA. NA is equal to NC plus CA, right? Now, what is NA? Well, consider triangle NAE, this one. This is again angle alpha. AE is abscissa of A in new coordinates, which is U. So the NA is a hypotenuse in this triangle, so it can be expressed with AE divided by cosine, which is uh, U divided by cosine alpha. That's what NA is, right? And it's equal to NC. What's NC? NC is uh, a cachetus in NCO. CO is another cachetus, and this angle again is alpha. So CO is equal to uh, ordinate in the old system, which is Y. So it's Y times tangent alpha. And finally, CA. CA is X coordinate from which I multiply by cosine, u is equal to x cosine alpha plus y tangent times cosine that sign. So that's my transformation of, co of coordinates. Now, my question is, if Instead of x, y, I will use u, v in this formulation and substitute using this particular transformation law each coordinate. Will I have the same value? Well, let's just check it out. I should have, right? So if I replace x coordinate and y coordinate with u coordinate and v coordinate, so let's talk about new coordinate of the vector A. Vector A would be, so A1 is X, A2 is Y. So my new coordinate is A1 cosine alpha plus A2 sine alpha. That's my abscissa in the new coordinate. And the ordinate uh, am I right? Yeah, I think I'm right. And the ordinate is minus A1 sine alpha plus A2 cosine alpha. So that's how my vector A1, A2 looks in the new coordinates which are uh, rotated from the old one by angle alpha. Now, similarly the B. B1 cosine alpha plus B2 sine alpha comma minus uh, B1 sine alpha plus B2 cosine alpha. Okay? Now, my A times B scalar product would that be equal to... Now, the first coordinate times the first coordinate plus second times second. Okay, so we have four different uh, members because this is the sum of two, this is the sum of two. So it's A times A1, B1, cosine square alpha. Now, this times this plus A1, B1, uh, cosine alpha, sine alpha. A1, A2, B1, sine alpha, cosine alpha, and plus A2, B2, sine square alpha. Now I have to add to this the result of multiplication of these two. So it's plus A1, B1, sine square alpha
uh, minus a1 b2 sine alpha cosine alpha minus a2 b1 cosine alpha sine alpha plus a2 b2 cosine square alpha. So that's my result, right? Now, a1, b1, actually I made a mistake, this is b2, <coughs> a1, b1, a1, b2, right, it's b2. I know it should reduce, that's why here, yes, a1, b2, cosine, sine, a1, b2, sine, cosine. So these two are out. One is plus, another is minus. Now this, a2, b1, sine, cosine, a2, b1, cosine, sine, plus and minus, out. Now, a1, b1, cosine square and a1, b1, sine square. If I summarize them together, a1, b1 goes outside of the parenthesis and cosine square plus sine square is equal to 1. So, these two sum up to a1, b1. Similarly, this one and this one, a2, b2 goes outside of the parenthesis and in the parenthesis I have cosine square plus sine square, which is also 1. As you see, I got exactly the same as before, which proves that rotation of the coordinates changes the coordinates, but it does not change the scalar, scalar product. So scalar product is invariant. That's very important. Invariant relative to rotation and other uh, transformations of the coordinates which do not change the matrix lengths and angles of the, of the system. Now, my um, proof actually heavily depended on some particular drawing where my point is in the first quadrant and my uh, angle of rotation is uh, just smaller than, than, than the angle to the, to the point, etc. Now, you obviously understand that for every other um, kind of a variation of this picture. What if my point is not in the first quadrant, but let's say in the third quadrant? I will also be able to do exactly the same type of manipulations with a couple of triangles and expressing one through another. It's always exactly the same. So I don't really even bother with all these different cases. Um, this is just an illustrative example, actually, that the system works. And it would work exactly the same way in any other uh, mutual position of the points and vectors. So this was kind of a more difficult part of the um, proof that all the rules we were talking about are actually preserved. Because the rest of them are really trivial. So what was the second rule? Second rule was this. Multiplication by no vector is supposed to give the result equal to no. Zero, actually, right? So, this is easy, because what is zero? Vector, no vector. Well, that's the vector which has zero lengths, right? Which means the coordinates are, it's just a point. It's a vector which is reduced to one particular point, which has no direction, and the length equal to zero. Well, if you use this formula, where b1 is equal to zero and b2 is equal to zero, obviously you will get zero. So, the second rule is trivial. Now, the third rule is that unit vector multiplied by itself should give the result of 1. Well, um, we are talking about unit vector uh, multiplied scalarly, multiplied by itself, right? Which means that a1, a2 is exactly the same as b1, b2, right? So the formula would be in this case, uh, so the a would be, let's say, a, A, and B would be A, A. And what do I know? I know that the length of this vector, A, A, is equal to 1, which means what? Which means A square plus A square is equal to 1. Correct? Because what is the length of the vector? 
this is uh, the hypotenuse and uh, abscissa and originate are two catches, right? So by Pythagorean theorem, the length of the vector square is equal to sum of the squares of the, uh, of the abscissa and, uh, and originate. So if this length is equal to 1, then this should be the equality which I'm actually talking about. But now, what is the scalar product of A and B in this case? Well, it's A times A, right? Plus A times A. Which is exactly A squared plus A squared. I know it's equal to 1, right? So that's how we prove this one. That's easy to. Next is associative law relative to multiplication by a constant. So K times vector A scalar product by B is equal to K times scalar product A times B. Well, this is again very trivial because what is the multiplication uh, of the vector by a constant in, um, in coordinate representation? Obviously, you remember that this is K1, KA1, KA2. That's the coordinates. Now, if you multiply this by the vector B, which is this, you will have Ka1 times B1 plus Ka2 times B2. Now, on the other hand, what is AB? AB is A1, B1 plus A2, B2. And if you multiply it by K, you get exactly the same thing as this. So that's trivial proof too. And the last is distributive law I don't need this parenthesis just by C equals A C plus B C where C is where C is C1 C2 all right? Now, how to prove that? Again, very easily. First of all, we know what is the sum of two vectors in coordinate form. This is sum of coordinates, right? Okay, so that's this vector. Now, if you multiply it by C, which is C1, C2, you will get C1 times A1 plus B1 plus C2 times A2 plus B2. Now, what is this? Well, AC is A1, C1 plus A2, C2. What is BC? Is B1, C1 plus B2, C2. Now, this is exactly the same as this, because you can open the parentheses. These are just real numbers, right? So, amount of numbers, the distributive law is working. So, again, C1A1, which is this one, C1B1, which is this one, C2A2, which is this, and C2B2, which is this. It's exactly the same. So, that proves, actually, that starting from the formula like this for um, scalar product, we can actually derive all the rules which we were talking about in the very beginning from which, in turn, we derived our formula. So they are very much connected to each other. It's a natural kind of way of expressing these rules in a formula like this. Now, the next lecture and the problems, actually, which, uh, uh, which I will present, will be dedicated to exactly the same rules, but we would like to start from the geometric representation uh, of the scalar product as the product of the lengths and the cosine of an angle between them, and again derive all these rules. But that would be the next lecture. Meanwhile, I do recommend you to go to unizor.com and uh, go to this particular problem one. This is called problem one in the scalar product topic. And try to do exactly the same as I did, especially the first problem related to rotation of the coordinates, because it's not really trivial. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks very much, and good luck.